Good morning. Yes, we're at the Watch and Clock Museum in Columbia, Lancaster County, where a new exhibit has been here for some time and a special guest as well to go along with it. It's the James Bond War, the Courts Revolution. And with me today, I have Del Deaton, and yep. he's a bit of an expert in this. So, Del, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about, broadly speaking, what the exhibit is and what it has to offer for people interested? Sure. Well, we've done uh, James Bond watch uh, exhibits here since 2010 in various kinds of iterations, and uh, our purpose has always been to say, here's what James Bond uh, wore, that means it's important. We're now asking James Bond to take a little bit of a supporting role here, and what we want you to do is you're attracted by James Bond, and now James Bond is going to tell a story of one of the most important pieces of history as it relates to the evolution and revolution of watch development, uh, the idea of taking a quantum leap in accuracy. So what James Bond did was he was right there at the beginning of the Quartz Revolution. The first watch that he wore was in 1973. We're going to talk about the different players who were competitive in this market. So the Americans were there. Uh, Japan was represented by Seiko and other companies. Switzerland was represented by Tag Heuer and Omega. And we start out in 1973, and then we evolve our way through the problems. Uh, how did they deal with battery issues? How did they deal with display issues? How did they deal with the ideas of case sizes, big watches versus small watches? And we line these things up so you can literally see a progression from 1973 to uh, 1987 in the one case and then continuing with 1995 here in the forward case. So with all of that in mind, what were some of the major challenges then that this essentially tried to tackle that we saw as a progression through time and maybe didn't know? Well, one of the first ones is uh, that when you were wearing a watch, uh, the watch would go dead, uh, like smart watches of today. You were looking at a blank screen, and it was not until you actually pushed a button in the side that people didn't care for so much. So that was the first watch. And then you went to a digital display, which was important in terms of managing power supplies. But people said, well, we'd like to have our analog display back. And so instead of having a continuous sweeping motion of the hands, uh, they had these uh, uh, movements of the second hand that would move at one second interval. So you had power supplies. And then finally you had the case size to get these things where the thinner watch was the more uh, elegant watch. All right, well, thank you so much. We'll be checking in in just a little bit during the 7 o'clock hour with some more interesting information that you get to learn that you might not know just by looking at it during the movie. But for now, we are here in Columbia, Lancaster County. I'm Andrea Michaels, Fox 43 WPMT. Yes, that is right. The James Bond War the Quartz Revolution exhibit opens today, and we have some really interesting pieces here to talk about that you can check out. And also, it really just helps summarize the historical significance of how his watches changed through time and the progression and kind of what they were going at by trying to achieve precision in time. And here to sort of talk about that challenge through the years is Del Deaton. He is the exhibit curator and kind of an expert on James Bond watches specifically. So Del, let's get started. You say that this piece here, this display overall just shows that struggle toward um, shows that struggle toward precision and as we know James Bond he was always racing against the clock right exactly and what it is that we wanted to do is you're right here at the climax of the tour of the of the museum right so you come through here you're approaching from the aisle and now this kiosk summarizes the entire exhibit do you want to look at this do you want to understand the quartz revolution do you want to see it how James Bond saw it so this first watch the one that's on the left is the same model worn by Pierce Brosnan as James Bond in Goldeneye it's a quartz watch, and so the idea was that this watch and the watch next to it, which Pierce Brosnan then wore in his next three movies as James Bond, you should not be able to tell the difference between these watches. It should be a no compromise. Uh, it simply is a different way of telling time. And why is that? Because. 
people don't want to get involved in um, how it is their watch works. They want to get involved in what their watch does. It helps me control my life. It helps me be on time. It doesn't nuisance me. It doesn't make me wind it at night. It doesn't make me worry about whether or not that it's on my wrist. And I can simply choose which style works better for me. And how about the difference in precision? Because we were going over this and it was quite significant, correct? Yes. Uh, the watch that's on the left, the quartz watch, is accurate to within plus or minus four or five, sec four or five tenths of a second per day. The watch on the right is accurate to within five or six full seconds a day. So 10 or 11, 12 times more accurate. Absolutely, and you know that is a significant difference like we had just mentioned. There's just, it's so amazing to see how something as little as a watch can have so much history to the background behind it and also have so much significance that you might not even know about. And that is all that this exhibit is about, which is what really makes it so interesting. So today the exhibit opens, you can certainly stop by and take a look around through the upcoming weekend and see just exactly what there is to learn. We'll be back during the eight o'clock hour with a little bit of a look ahead toward the present and even perhaps the future in terms of all of this. But for now, we are here in Columbia, Lancaster County. I'm Andrea Michaels, Fox 43 WPMT. Good morning. Yes, that's right. The James Bond War the Courts Revolution exhibit opens today. In fact, in just a few short hours, if you wanted to, you could just drive by and come to it. And really what it shows is not just the fact that, yes, James Bond wore these watches, but how there's historical significance, too, that you might not have seen as you've probably seen some of these different watches that he's used over the ages. And here to help break me break that down a little bit for me is Del. Deaton, he's an expert in James Bond watches. Now, Dell, yeah. we kind of took a, we were kind of talking about this ever constant battle between precision and trying to get it because obviously James Bond, time is of the essence for this guy in right. almost every, practically every movie actually that has come out. So here we're taking a look at a few pieces here that you say kind of was the so-called end or at least temporary end of the courts era. Right. Yes, uh, when we were doing uh, our earlier conversation, we talked about the idea of the end of the quartz revolution was to give you a watch that basically did what you were used to without any compromise. Looked the same, felt the same, you glanced at the dial, it was the same watch, all of those kinds of things. One of the things that you and I had discussed earlier was where is this in terms of current discussions about smartwatches? And uh, is it possible that we truly understand where the uh, smartwatch revolution is going? And my answer is, I don't think we do. I think we're right back to the 1973 Pulsar LED watch when considering the first Android devices, when considering the first Apple devices or Pebble or name your brand. And uh, I think where it is that this ends up is anybody's guess. So we're basically at the very beginning of something that you might want to loosely consider breakthrough and that there's still a whole lot of world of discovery and evolution yet to come in terms of present day watches then. Absolutely. And as uh, you and I were talking earlier, uh, if I was a betting guy, I would say that you're going to see James Bond wear a uh, smart watch before it's all over with. Oh, I'm sure that would make Apple very happy too. Do you see a comeback also for perhaps Quartz? Um, I could see James Bond wearing a quartz watch again, absolutely. I think that uh, it's all a matter of what fits with the character, what the plot calls for. Uh, Omega, which is the current James Bond watch supplier, has always been innovative in terms of quartz. I easily see him going back to quartz at some point, either permanently or as an aside watch. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming out here today and helping to break this down and give our viewers a little bit extra. So as you can see, it's always this little ongoing cycle that's never quite ending. And as we've touched a little bit on just a few moments ago, there could definitely be a lot more to come. You can come down and check out the exhibit anytime during the museum's opening hours. But for now, we are here in Columbia, Lancaster County. I'm Andrea Michaels, Fox 43 WPMT.